Okay, so first and foremost, just a show of hands, how many of, okay, let me first of all, let me tell you about how the Pokemon game show works. All of the information is pretty much from the first three generations of Pokemon game and some from the show, and that's the reaction that I always get, which is why we do it that way. Now, what we are looking for, don't raise your hands just yet because we have a little screening process, it's called pick the card and hopefully it's the high one. Um, we are looking for people that, A, do not fail under pressure because, you know, there's a lot of people that are watching, so, you know, if you're really shy, this is probably not the game for you. Uh, B, that don't mind the fact that my friend Adam back there is filming, uh, and it may eventually wind up on YouTube. So if that is also not a problem in parents, that's with that's up to you too, so on that. Uh, and third, if the types of trivia questions we're going to ask, and like I said, they're from the show and the first three generations of the game. If all of those are interesting to you, here's how we do it. Now, don't stand up just yet. I'm going to explain the process. You're going to form a line, and there's a person with a soda right there in the back that you probably want to move, or else it might get kicked over. What we're going to do is we're going to form a nice orderly line, starting with the deck of cards, not yet, and going straight back, down the middle, all right? Now, how many of you are interested in playing this game? So, uh, okay. Okay, cool. So, ordinarily, you draw until you get a joker, but since there aren't 54 of you who are interested in playing this game, the way it will work, if you are cosplaying as someone or something from the Pokemon universe, and that counts, and that counts, and that definitely counts, you draw two cards, and you keep the high one. Yes, that counts. If you are not, you draw one card. The four high cards will be on the show. All right? So, if you are cosplaying Pokemon, you draw two. If you aren't, you draw one. Very orderly, very neatly, let's start the line. And remember, go straight back the middle. There we go. Okay, so everyone draw a card. Okay, right now you've got a queen. Hang on to that queen. Go ahead, draw two. Okay, you get to keep the king. That's pretty good, so hang on to that king. Stay up here. Stay up here until someone draws a card that's higher. Okay, right now you have a 10. 10 is good for now. So go ahead and stand up here with everyone else for now. You get two. Okay, well you've already, you've already drawn. You've already drawn. Okay, let's see. Now you've got an ace. So hang on here. Hey buddy, with the 10, hang on up here. Come on up here. Now right now you have a 10, which means you might get beaten by the next person to draw. So here we go. Draw, draw two cards because you're, go ahead. Draw two. Go ahead. Draw two. Now if you draw higher than a 10, going to knock this person out. You just you drew four. That's okay. None of them are higher than a 10. So, unfortunately, you didn't get on the show. So, all right. Now, you get two. Okay. You get to keep the king. That knocks out your 10, unfortunately. So, you are out of the running. Now, the queen is the vulnerable card. Go ahead and draw one. Hope to beat a queen. Oh, you tied a queen, so stick around. Right now, you have to beat a queen or tie it. Okay. Six doesn't do it, I'm sorry to say. All right. You get two cards. One. Oh, okay, the ace knocks out both queens because we've got kings and aces. Uh, so I'll take your queen, I'll take your queen, so you're eliminated. Uh, you can draw another card if you want. If you draw a joker, it's automatic, because nothing beats a joker, so go ahead. You can still use the ace, yeah. You get to keep the high card. Okay, you didn't get a joker, so hang on to your ace. Now king is the card to tie or beat. Okay, ten won't do it, sorry to say. All right, come on and... Try to beat it. Uh, that, won't, uh, that definitely won't do it. Sorry. King or better. King or better. King or better. That won't do it. <laughs> oh, ace. Okay, the kings are still in. The kings are still in. Because we have three aces. Okay, right now you have to draw at least a king. Oh, you get one more. Okay. Come on up. You get to draw two. Careful not to draw more than two. Okay, nope, got to right. have a king or better. All right, you got to tie a king. All right, come on up, draw one. And uh, guy, so the, the gentleman in the back of the line, you are the back of the line now, because we're going to run out of cards. Okay, come on up here, draw one. The uh, gentleman in the red shirt and gray jacket. Oh, okay, so now we've got four kings, you're all tied. Go ahead and have one. Any one card. Yeah, you've got you to get an ace or a joker at this point. All the kings are gone. No. <laughs> oh, wait, no, you, go, you do, actually. It's Pokemon fan. Go ahead, draw two. Okay, there's one ace and one joker left in the deck. So, one more. Okay, nope, that won't do it. All right, you need an ace or a joker. 
and that won't do it. Okay, one more shot at you need an ace or a joker, and that won't do it. All right, come on up here and draw one. Yeah, draw one, any, any one that you see here. Okay, that won't do. All right, one for you, and one for you. Okay, now, all work. Okay, so if you have an ace, you're on the show, guaranteed. Okay, so who, who are my aces? We have one, two aces. Okay, go ahead and both of you take a seat up here. Three aces. Okay, now all the kings are tied. You get to go ahead and have a seat up here. You're up. Okay, now, here's how we, here's how we break the tie. Go ahead and let me have your kings. Here's how we break the tie. You guys are going to play rock, paper, scissors against me. All right? And it's going to be rock, paper, scissors, shoot. You're going to throw on shoot, okay? If you get that wrong, you're out. All right? So rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Don't throw until shoot. All right? Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay? So it's not you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, now you play each other. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, yeah, you didn't throw, so you're out. So, okay, so you're in. Well done. All right, we got our four. <laughs> Okay, now, next, I need to put your names in the program, so. Nathan, you can't go Oh, can we use that other microphone? Can, they can share, they can all share, if you don't mind. Okay, so, first and foremost, I want to congratulate four winners already. Everyone who is on this, on this panel is already a winner on the Pokemon Game Show. Now, you have buzzers. Player one, you have buzzer number one. Player two, you have buzzer number two. Player four, you're all the way over there, and you are player three. Let me take these cards. It's the big red button. The big red button is the only one that works, all right? And we will test those buttons right before we get started on the show, all right? Now, uh, there are three types of questions on this game show. The first type of question is a regular trivia question. It can be about the show or about the game. But again, first three gens only. Uh, then I have a stack of Pokedex entries. I'll read off the Pokedex entry. You tell me the Pokemon. And then, this is a brand new type of question that I'm unveiling at this game show. It's called, in Japanese, it's... I will give you the Japanese name of a Pokemon and three clues. Three clues that will lead you towards the American name of the Pokemon, all right? <laughs> and by the way, none of it's Pikachu, because Pikachu is Pikachu, is Pikachu. So, right, Pikachu is the Pikachu in Japanese. So you're not going to see any of those. <laughs> now, I said everybody here is a winner. How many of you have heard of a convention called KatoriCon up in Sewell? Everyone up here will at least get a half price admission to that convention. The winner of this game will get a full admission. So, yes. <laughs> See, that's what you get. So, all three of these people, will, three of these four will get a half price admission to KatoriCon. And KatoriCon is January 9th and 10th up in Sewell, at the community college up there. Uh, yeah, January 9th and 10th. Yeah, so you've got some time. <laughs> uh, so there we go. That's the prizes that we're playing for. Are we ready for the Pokemon Game Show? Are we ready for the Pokemon Game Show? Prove it to me. Here we go. You know what to do here. There we go. See, because we did this already during Michelle Maltz's panel, so you've got what you had your one in you, and now it's gone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pokemon Game Show!
We are here at Animania at the Monmouth County Library HQ in the Are we having a good time? Fantastic. My name is Grego. I'm here with Grego's Game Shows, and I am really excited to be bringing this game show to all of our friends here uh, at the convention. We have four contestants up here that are ready to play the Pokemon Game Show. Shall we introduce them? Yes. All right. We will start with player one. And player one, would you please push your button? Thank you. And your button works. Let's welcome Haley to the show. Now, Haley, we have a microphone here. It is on. Please tell everyone about yourself. Well, I live in Kingsburg, New Jersey. And I really like Pokemon. All right, well, that will serve you well on this show. Okay, head to John. Please push your button. Thank you, and welcome to John, the Pokemon Game Show. <laughs> Introduce yourself, John. Okay, um, I live in Manalpa, New Jersey. I'm possibly the biggest Pokemon nerd you'll ever know. Possibly not. Except me. Quiet. Well, I... You have a rooting section in the front row yeah, here, well, I believe. For some reason, my favorite, region is, <laughs> my favorite region is Hoenn, but my favorite Pokemon is from Kanta, so it makes no sense. <laughs> All right, well, welcome, and good luck to you. And we have a celebrity on our show. Dawn is here. Let's welcome Dawn. Dawn, push your button. Make sure that it works. Thank you. So now you <laughs> yourself. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Dawn. I'm from the Sinner region, and I am Ashley. Female com uh, companion in you know this, the Diamond and Pearl series, and my starter is Piplup. Piplup, Piplup. Welcome, Don, and best of luck. And Nicole, if you would please push your button. Hey, let's welcome Nicole to the Pokemon Game Show. And would you please introduce yourself? Um, Nicole from Freehold, and yeah, that's it. All right, well, welcome to all four of our players. Here on the Pokemon Game Show, all of our games take place on our big game board here, and our first round today is called the Fast Track. I will explain how the game works, but first and foremost, we always start with a jump-in question. So fingers on buzzers, get ready. We start with a trivia question. When you know the answer, buzz in, all right? Audience, please, I caution you, please do not call out any answers. Please do not call out any numbers. Let them play the game, please, all right? So, here's the first question. You use sport balls in what special event from Pokemon Gold and Silver? And that's John. For the butt catching contest is the right answer. Well done, John. Okay, John, that means you get control of our first game. It is called the Fast Track, and here is how the game works. On the top row are six Pokemon. Those six Pokemon appear on every single row, all right? Those six Pokemon and only those six Pokemon, and they make a line. So, for example, I'm going to open up door number four and show you that our good friend Gengar is behind door number four. There is a Gengar either directly below or diagonally below on the next line, and so on, all the way down. Your job is to find that line, however it does, okay? Whenever you make a mistake, your turn ends, but remember where you saw, and all players remember what you saw, because you can take over that fast track if you get control. You keep going until you make a mistake. You don't right now, you just call out numbers now. Okay, so I'm gonna close that because you don't have to start with that. If you find the fast track, you are through to the next round. At the end of this round, one player will be eliminated. So here we go. Okay, John, where do you wanna start on the top row? Number two, all right, let's see who's behind number two. And we are looking for Arcanine. Okay, so there's an Arcanine behind either seven, eight, or nine. Where is he? Number nine, you say. Let's open up number nine and show you that it is not. Now there's a Gengar. Now remember where you saw both of those. Your turn ends. Fingers on buzzers, players. Now I have a dex entry. Please buzz in when you can tell me which Pokemon has this as its very first dex entry. Here we go. Its body always burns with an orange glow that enables it to hide perfectly among flames. Everyone can buzz in. Dawn, Charmander is incorrect. Anyone else? We well, are looking for a fire type. Yes, Nicole. Ponyta is incorrect. For Haley or John, we are. Yes, Haley. Magmar is the right answer. Well done. That is the Pokedex entry for Magmar. Okay, so where would you like to start? 
You're going to start with four, all right? Because we know where the next Gengar is. Go ahead. Number nine is right. Now, there's a Gengar behind either 14, 15, or 16. 15, you want to try. Let's open up 15. And no, Alakazam. Now, remember where you saw those? As you make a fast track, it will reveal more obvious paths as we go along. So here we go. Fingers on buzzers. Now, this kind of question is called in Japanese hits. I'm going to give you the Japanese name of a Pokemon and then three clues. All right? So here we go. In Japanese, it's Garuda. Garuda. And here are the clues. It is a normal type. It is a mother. Yes, John. Kangaskhan is what we were going after. Well done. God or not is Kangaskhan. So, where do you want to start, John? Four again. Yep. Now, nine. There we go. All right. Now, where's Gengar? Number 16, you think? And no. All right. So, now we know. If you've been paying attention, now we know where Gengar is. So, fingers on buzzers. Someone may go all the way through. I have a trivia question now, players. Fingers on buzzers, here is the question. There are only two Pokemon that are both Dragon and Psychic dual type. One is Latias, what's the, yes, Haley? And the other is Latios, that's the right answer. Okay, where are you going, Haley? Number four. Nine, now you know where Gengar is on the third row. What's that? Fourteen, yep, that's right. Now, three chances. For the next Gengar. 21, you say? No. Okay. Now we know where two Alakazams are. We're getting close. Fingers on buzzers, players. It's another Dex entry, and here's how it reads. It seductively wiggles its hips as it, and that's Haley, as it walks. It can cause people to dance in unison with it. Jinx is the right answer. Well done, Haley. Where are you going? Yeah. 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 Number 20, let's see if Gengar is behind number 20. No, there's our Arcanine. Now we know where the other Gengar is. So someone may be finding their fast track on this next question. It's another Japanese one, players. In Japanese, it's Zenigame. Here are the clues. First clue, it is a water type. Second clue, it is a starter. Uh, yes, John? Totodile is incorrect. Third clue, they have a squad. Go on. Squirtle squad, that's right. Yes, there you go. All right, Don, where to? Where are you going, Don? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Now. 19, there you go. 50-50 chance of finding the last Gengar and making it through to the next round. 26, is she right? Yes! Dog, congratulations, you are through. You do not have to play anymore on this round. You put your buzzer down and take a break. Now, if you look, players, it's very obvious where another fast track ends based on the pattern that you see up here right now. So the question is, does it go that way or does it go that way? So here we go. Fingers on buzzers, players. I have another trivia question for you. How much does a potion cost? Yes, John. Three hundred poker dollars is the right answer. Well done. Okay, John. Where do you want to begin your new fast track? Number five. Let's see what's behind number five and a Snorlax. All right. Where's the next Snorlax? Ten. No, there's the Dragonite. All right, so now we know two pieces of the Dragonite chain. Fingers on buzzers, players. Another Dex entry, and it reads as follows. The end of its tail serves as a buoy that keeps it from drowning, even in a vicious current. Yes, Haley? Meryl is the right answer. Well done. Okay, where are you going, Haley? Number two. Okay, there's the Arcanine. Number seven is another Arcanine. Now we know there's only one choice for the next one. And we know that there's only one choice for the next one. And now you know there's only one choice for the next one. 25, congratulations, you've made your fast track. Well done. It pays to pay attention. Okay, Haley, you are now through to the next round. So it is between John and Nicole for the last fast track. 
And I can tell you, we already know the first three steps of the fast track because of the pattern that we see. We also know what goes with three now as a result. So here we go. Fingers on buzzers, players. Now I have for you another Japanese question. In Japanese, it's peep peep. Yes, Nicole? It is not. All right, so that means, John, you get to hear the whole thing. You do not have to buzz in. You can give me a guess after you hear the whole thing. It's, it is peep peep in Japanese. The three clues are, it is a fairy type. The second clue, moon. The third clue, metronome. Togepi is incorrect. So, Nicole, you're back in on the next question. Audience? Clefairy. Yes, right. That is the right answer. Okay, but good guess, John. Okay, another trivia question. Incidentally, players, we are now at the halfway point of this round. We only have another nine questions left. If we need all nine, which I don't think we will. Here we go. Here's the next question. Give me the next line in this famous phrase. To protect the world from devastation, John, we'll take it. To unite all people within our nation. Well done. Okay. So. <laughs> No, no, it's all, it's all a 45 minute show. Okay, John, how do you want to play this? Good call, we know the next one. Yeah, we know the next one. 15, now we don't know, unless you're paying attention, we don't know the next one. 50-50 chance, is it 21 or 22? <laughs> 22, you say? I will tell you, that is incorrect. So. Now we know, and we could probably finish the Alakazam chain, so control, very important. Both players are in this. Here is the next DEX entry, players. Listen carefully. Adores circular objects. Wanders the street on a nightly basis to look for dropped loose change. I'll tell you, we're looking for a normal type. We're looking for a member of Team Rocket. We are looking for a Pokemon who sounds like this. Yes, Nicole. You don't remember his name. Go ahead. Yeah, he's a cat, but which one? And his name is? Got to call it wrong. John? Meowth, that's right. That's right. Okay. Go for it, John. One, eight. 15, now you know the next one, 21, 50-50 chance and you're through the next round. 28, is he right? Is he through the next round? Yes, he is! So congratulations, John, you are through the next round. Now, uh, unfortunately, Nicole, that means you are not, but just for making it up here on the show, I have a certificate with a discount code. You get half price off of a ticket to KotoriCon in Sewell, New Jersey. Now, you must, and I will caution everyone who wants to go to this con, you must purchase your tickets in advance. It is a capped convention, and they only have about 1,000 tickets available. So if you want to go to this con, you should pre-order now, even though it's in January. So you just use that coupon code right there, and you get half price off of an admission. Let's give it up for Nicole! We are down to three players. Only one of them is going to win the grand prize. Who's it going to be? Stay tuned and find out. And no, you don't get bonus points if you do this rap. Okay, audience, are we having fun so far? Excellent. Okay, let's move on to round number two. We have three players left. This round is called the Evolution Match. <laughs> All right, so fingers on buzzers, players. We're gonna start with a buzz in and then I'll explain the round. Dawn, you need to be back in on this now. Dawn, grab your buzzer. Oh, you have your buzzer, I'm sorry. The, the fourth buzzer's gone, okay. Uh, okay, so here we go. Fingers on buzzers, players. We're going to start with an in Japanese question this time. In Japanese, it's dicta. Dawn taking a shot. Diglett's right, yes. <laughs> Uh, the clues were it's ground type, cave, and trio were the clues. Uh, so well done. Now here's how this works, Dawn. Now on the board we have pictures of Pokemon that all appear within an evolutionary chain. All the members of the chain touch. So for example, if there were a Charmander behind 10, 
there will be a Charmeleon behind 4, 9, 11, or 16, and there will be a Charizard touching one of those two on the side, all right? It, it, it will either be straight up and down, sideways, or in an L shape. And Evie's not up there, don't worry. <laughs> so, what you have to do, Dawn, is you have to start with any number you like and then find all the Pokemon that appear within that chain. If you do, you will capture them all. The two players that capture six Pokemon first move on to the next round. However, there's something else on the board as well. Team Rocket is up there somewhere. If you find Team Rocket, I don't know how they do it, but if you have any captured Pokemon, they will steal one. I don't know, sometimes they get lucky. Okay. <laughs> I will tell you, Pikachu is not up there just so there is no chance that that will ever happen. Okay, Don, you have control of the board. Where do you want to start? Number 10, okay, you're gonna start with 10, and I'm gonna tell you, you are looking for the three evolutions of Bulbasaur. So there's either, so four, nine, 11, or 16, they'll be either an Ivasaur, Ivysaur or a Venusaur. Where do you wanna go? 11 right next door. And no, okay, there's a Kingdra. Okay, so there we go. Now remember where you saw both of those players. Fingers on buzzers, here's the next question. It's a trivia question. Brock is the gym leader of what city? Yes, Haley. That would be Pewter City. Well done. All right, Haley. Where do you want to start? You can. You can start at 11. So now we're looking for Horsey and Cedra. For five, we will find the Horsey. Now, Cedra touches one of those somewhere. So there are technically one, two, three, four, five possibilities, but we already know what's behind one of them. So best of luck. Where is Cedra? Number 12, is she right? Nope. Good news is, all that did was cost you your turn because you didn't have any Pokemon. So just remember that. Now we've had people pick the same Team Rocket Square before, so don't do that. Remember where you saw it. Players, fingers on buzzers, I have a dex entry and it reads as follows. Very protective of its territory. It will bark and bite to repel, yes, Dawn, Incorrect. It will bark and bite. Yes, John. You would like to say Growlithe? Well, it's a good thing you did because that's the right answer. Well, well done. It will bark and bite to repel intruders from its space. Where do you begin, John? Eleven. Yep. Five. Now you got three chances. Which one is it? And now you got the best friend. Number six. Is he right? Sounds right. He's right! He was using logic there because obviously there's no one chain, so unless it was another Team Rocket Square and I was just that mean, that's where the other evolution was. So well done. That means you capture all three of those and you are now halfway there to get it through to the next round. So well done. Now, players, you will notice that that opens up the board a little bit, so we know what's behind number 12, but that also means that some corners may have some easy chains. So keep that in mind. All right, so here's a Japanese question. In Japanese, it's Elibu. Yes, John. Elikid is incorrect. I'll give the three clues for Dawn and Haley. First clue, it's an electric type. John, you're, you're out for this one because you already gave the wrong answer. That's okay. Second clue, power plant. Third clue, yes, Dawn. Electabuzz is the right answer. Yes, the third clue would have been striped. Okay, so there you go. Where do you go, Don? To 20? All right, let's see if that strategy pays off. Oh, we'll give her another three chain. Good luck. Uh, well, okay, now I will tell. Well, technically, technically it could be because it would be in an L if that were the case. But I will tell you, you don't have to pick that diagonal if you don't want to. Okay, let's see if that's right. It's not, okay. So there's a two chain, players. Well, the, the trivia questions, yeah, because we assume that you know what the Pokemon are, but the trivia questions are easy, so they're easier that way. Okay, speaking of trivia questions, here's the next one. What color is a shiny onyx? John, it is gold. Well done, do you have a shiny onyx? 
You have a shiny milk tank. Oh, all right. Well done. Where do you go, John? I'm good for power. Okay, you're going to go back to 10. We know what's there. Now, Ivy Sword or Venusaur? Okay, so you're playing the strategy that if there is an evolution there, that you'll automatically get it. So let's see if you're right. Now remember, you don't have to go that way, but if you're going that way, he's taking a risk. Let's see if it pays off. No! Oh! Court, court, court! Okay, dex entry players. Here we go, fingers on buzzers. The dex entry reads as follows. Although it looks frightening, it is actually kind and affectionate. It is very popular among women. Okay, now try. There we go. Okay, Haley's in. Stubble's the right answer, yes. Apparently, uh, when I run it in a web browser like this, because we're on a new computer because I screwed up and brought the wrong charger for my actual laptop, so thank goodness the library and, and Joan were nice enough to come with the save on that. Thank you, Joan. Joan saved this game by bringing me a laptop, so... Yes. Oh, there's nothing. We were just thanking you. Uh, okay. Where do you go, Haley? Number eight. And oh! And Haley's blasting off again. Uh, all right. So here we go. Now, incidentally, based on the time that we currently have, we have five more minutes in this round. If we don't have two players that have that are obviously close, we will do a tiebreaker to decide who moves on to the next round. All right. So here we go. In Japanese, it's usoki. Usoki. Here are the three clues. First clue, it is a rock type. Second clue, it is a faker. Third clue, yes, Haley. Pseudo Wudo is the right answer. Third clue is it knows mimic. Where do we begin? What's that? 23. All right, number 23. <laughs> Haley's down to negative three Pokemon. No, it doesn't work that way. He is. She is. She is. All right. Trivia question, players. Here we go. What kind of evolutionary stone do you need to evolve a Roselia? Yes, John? Leafstone incorrect. Haley or Dawn? Haley's in. Dawn stone is incorrect. Can you just tell me? It's not a moonstone, no. Uh, okay, well, hang on just a second. Let me just make sure. You know now it's a shiny stone. That's what I'm going to want. Hit your button now, Dawn. Yeah, it does work. You're just not getting in on time. Yep, okay. So, fingers on buzzers, players. We move on to another trivia question. Three minutes to go in the round. Trivia question reads, Her actual name in the anime is Delia. But what does Ash call her? John. You need to tell me or I gotta buzz you. <laughs> Haley or Dawn? He calls her mom because that's all you had to say was mom. It says Ash's mom. Okay. Okay. Either will be fine. Here's another text entry players. Fingers on buzzers. Its flat, thin body is always stuck on walls. Its shape. Yes, Dawn. Incorrect. Its shape appears to have some meaning. Haley, unknown is the right answer. Yes. Okay. Haley, there's only 14 market squares on the board, so there's only one more you haven't found yet. Hopefully you won't find it. Where are we going? Okay, 20 we know. All right. Number 19, let's see it. Oh, why not? All right, why not? Okay, we have two minutes left to go in this round. So right now, Dawn and Haley, you're facing sudden death if you don't get on the board here. John, you're in a very safe position. Here we go. In Japanese, it's blacky, blacky. It is a dark type. Clue number one, friendship. Clue number two, Eevee. John, Umbreon is the right answer, yes. So, where are you going, John? Number 20, all right, we're narrowing that one down. Number 
26. Oh, okay, now all you gotta do is find Butterfree. Twenty-five. You're right. No, but now we know where that chain is. So this is very important. We have one minute to go in this round. So whoever gets buzzes in is probably going through the next round. It is a trivia question, and it reads as follows: Where is Professor Elm's laboratory? John, New Bark Town is the right answer. John, you're a maniac. All right, where are you going? Nineteen. Yes, 25, that is right, and you got two more. All right, pretty much, yes, because this is the last question of this round. So, yeah, you don't need it. Haley, Dawn, here's the situation. Make a chain and you're through, otherwise we go to sudden death. Let's close those doors and bring on the next dex entry. Here we go. It uses the fine hair that covers its body to sense air currents and predict its enemy's actions. We're looking for a psychic type. We're looking for an evolution. And Dawn is the right answer. Only one it could be. Now, Dawn, if you make a chain, you are through the next round. If not, we will play sudden death between you and Haley. Best of luck. 20 and 26. 27, is she right? Yes, she is! And unfortunately, Haley, that is the end of this round, which means we have to say goodbye to you. And I will say goodbye in the same way. You are going to get a 50% discount for a badge for KatoriCon. And here it is. Oh, actually, no, no, you got a free ticket. Yeah, we got the discount for the first one. You got a free ticket, so well done. I'm now looking at these things. The grand prize is two tickets. The grand prize is two tickets. They told me half price for three, and the, anyway, give it up for, uh, give it up for Haley. Okay, so, now then, we move on to the next round means I have to do a little bit here. Okay, now, John, you need to grab the buzzer that Haley had. You're now number one, so grab Haley's buzzer. Dawn, you grab buzzer number two now. Okay, here we go. We are now in the round that's going to determine who gets to face our champion. But who do you have to beat in order to face the champion? The Elite Four, and so this round is called the Elite Four. Okay, let me put the correct names in, they are in. Again, you will see, you, you will see, you will see. Okay, so first of all, for control, here is a trivia question. Complete this list. Ruby, Sapphire, John, Emerald. Okay, so here's how the Elite Four round works. You've earned the right to face the first member of the Elite Four, and today it is Chantal. Now, Chantal has two Pokemon, Driftblim and Gengar. On the board now, we have names of attacks. So what you have to do, find an attack that's super effective against Driftblim, then find an attack that's super effective against Gengar, in that order. If you do that, you will defeat Chantal. Now, you don't know any information, so you do not have to go first if you don't want to. You guys will go back and forth until someone defeats her. Do you want to go first, or do you want to make Dawn go first? You're going to go first. Okay, so you're looking for an attack that's super effective against Driftblim. Yeah, so well, you've got to find one of those on the board. <laughs> Number 16. All right, behind number 16, we find Shadow Claw, which is super effective. Now Gengar, and you'll defeat Chantal. Number 
for 20. High number 20, we find sky drop, not super effective. So close those doors. Now Dawn, you get to go. Right. Number one, we find Alice wins super effective. You defeated Chantal, just like that. All right, so that's one. So let's knock them out and make Chantal go away. Now, that means we're now going up against the second Elite Four member, which is Marshall. We'll find out about his Pokemon, but first, here's the next trivia question, players. What incense do you need in order to breed a Munchlax? To breed a Munchlax, what incense do you need? You need a lax incense. You need two Snorlax and a lax incense on one of them. All right, here's the next trivia question. For what video game system was Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness released? John, GameCube is the right answer. All right, here are Marshall's two Pokemon. Breloom, Medicham. Let me close these doors. Now, do you want to go first or do you want to make Dawn go first? Dawn, you're going first. All right, first, Breloom. Fly over flying. Number 23, Assurance. Not super effective. <laughs> okay, John. Number 20. Yeah, because Skydrop is super effective. Yes, four times. Now, Metacham. Well, Crunch, there you go. Well done, that'll do it. So there you go, you defeat Metacham. And we close those down. Now you each have one. Whoever defeats the most Elite Four members will be the winner of the game. Get a free admission, or get two free admissions, and then have a chance to become the new champion. So here we go. Speakers on buzzers. It's a dex entry. Oh yeah, let's get rid of them and get rid of him. All right, here we go, players. If it senses danger, it shakes its body and scatters. Yes, Dawn. No, it is not. You get to hear the whole thing, John. If it senses danger, it shakes its body and scatters spores from the top of its head. This Pokemon's spores are so toxic, they make trees and weeds wilt. No, not vile blue, it's shroomish. Shroomish. All right, next dex entry. Is said to have lived for hundreds of millions of years in the Earth's ozone layer above the clouds. Yes, Dawn. Got to say something. Got to hear the whole thing, John. Its existence had been completely unknown because it lived so high in the sky. No, it is Rayquaza. Rayquaza. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, we were looking for Rayquaza. All right, next next entry. Because it stores several kind of toxic gases in its body, it is prone to exploding without warning. Yes, Dawn? Incorrect, John? Coughing is the right answer. All right. So here we go. Next, we have Grimsley. Grimsley's got a hotch crow and a crocodile. Do you want to go first or second? Second. All right, Dawn, you're up first. First hotch crow. Number 18 is Shadow Sneak. Not super effective. Back over to you, John. Twenty-nine. Astonish. Not super effective. Back over to you, Dawn. Number 10. Miss. You just flat out missed. Go, John. 14. Night Slash. Dawn! Yes, 
for four. Rock throw will do, yes. Now Crocodile. Number 30 at the very end, and there we find Power Gem. Nope, okay. So either one you want to start with, John. Number four. Twenty-seven. Rock slide. All right, we found all the rocks. Go, dog. Twenty-eight, right next door. Looking for ice and finding it. Yes, you have done it. All right, well done. Okay, so here we go. We knock those out. Grimsley's done. John, you need to get this next one in order to force to force to force a special encounter. So here we go. It's a dex entry, players. Here we go. Its central core glows with the seven colors of the rainbow. Some people value the core as a gem. We're looking for, yes, John? Sable is incorrect. I started to say the clue, so I will finish it. We are looking for a dual type water psychic. Yeah, that was everything. Central core glows with the seven colors of the rainbow. Some people value the core as a gem. Oh, I know it, I know it. Nope. Now what do you, now you know, John? It's Starmie. It's Starmie. All right. So now, we're down to the Japanese questions. Here we go. In Japanese, it's Hinodarashi. Hinodarashi. Here are the clues. It is a fire type. Next clue, it's a starter. Third clue, got to buzz in. There you go, all right, yes, it is Cyndaquil. Okay, the final Elite Four member is Caitlin. Caitlin has a Gallade and an Alakazam. You wanna go first or second? All right, you're up, Dawn. Go ahead. Great. Drill Peck, over to you, John. Wait, no, I'm sorry, that was, yeah, that was super effective, sorry about that. Okay, for the win, Alakazam. <laughs> 25, does she remember, is she a winner? Ice Beam, no, all right, John. Number eight, and? Quickly, 24 is Channel Wall, yes! All right, so there we go. Now, here's the deal. You have forced a special encounter. So, we have one more Japanese question. Here we go. Let's get, let's get Caitlin out, let's get Caitlin out of there. Here we go. For the special encounter, in Japanese, it's Kairu. Here are the clues. It's a dual type, dragon and flying. Yes, John. Dragonite is right. All right, here is your faithful, faithful encounter. It's red. Red has two Pokemon, Venusaur, Charizard. Do you want to go first or second? All right, Venusaur first. Number six. Stone Edge, no. Dawn. Nine. Air Cutter, super effective for the win. Charizard. Thirteen. Miss. John. Nine, and for the win. Number six for a rock type, which is super effective to you in the game. So here's what happened. Dawn, we say goodbye with a free ticket to Katoricon. You get two, but your, your game is not over yet. Now you get a chance to become the champion of Animania. All right, let's go straight to it because we are almost out of time. All right, so John. You, know, you don't need the buzzers on this one. It's just you versus the board. Yes. Here's the deal. It's you versus the champion. Now, you get three KOs. That represents three theoretical Pokemon. They know every attack on the board. 
the champion, who is Iris, also has three Pokemon, and there are their silhouettes. On the board now are attacks. If you find an attack that's super effective, it's a one-hit KO for Iris's Pokemon. You'll do them each in turn. If you find an attack that's not super effective, it does one HP of damage. They all have four HP. If you find a space that says KO, that represents one of your Pokemon being knocked out. So you have to defeat all of hers before she defeats all of yours. If you do, you will become the champion of Animania and then next year, if I come back, and if Pokemon Game Show comes back, this will be you. And next year, you'll pick three Pokemon, and next year's player will then attempt to defeat you. All right? So, let's make it a little more exciting. There we go. We've got some excitement going. The first Pokemon, Archeops. Good luck. Number 15, behind number 15, we find KO. That's not where you want to start. One of your KO, one of your Pokemon is KO'd. Don't do that. Where do you go? Number 11. KO! Yeah. <laughs> <Keep it free. laughs> I will tell you, John, there are seven KOs. You found two of them already. Now, this has happened before and they won. It's also happened before, the very next thing they picked was a third KO. Don't do that. Defeat Iris. Good luck. 23. It is Ice Beam, super effective, one hit KO. Well done, man. There we go, all right, so. One down, two to go. We know the next one, it's Lapras. Best of luck. Twenty-six. Steel Wing, not super effective, one HP of damage, continue. Thirteen. Thundershot, super effective, you've got two. Okay, so here we go. Salamence for the win. Twenty-eight. Quick attack, not super effective. One HP of damage. Continue. Number two. Ember, not super effective. Continue. Fire does it. Yeah, dragon and flying. Number thirty. Unfortunately, that means Iris retains her championship and she probably hands it off to the champion of X and Y for the next time. But you did, but you did win two free admissions to KatoriCon, and hey, what do you know? There we go. So let's give it up to John and his brother. So that was the Pokemon Game Show, fellas and ladies and gentlemen. What did you think? Now make sure to give us a like on Facebook if you like, Grego's Game Shows, and uh, you'll be able to see more stuff like this. Thank you so much for having me to Animania. I will now be next door doing trivia surveys for my new game show. So if you're a big anime fan, go on over there and do the surveys. Thank you guys so much. This is Grego from Pokemon Game Show. Bye for now.